great veterans, both of the great deal at stake. We are taking up the battle early in the going. It doesn't surprise me a bit that Mario had an accident, an accident, the 11 car, that's Kevin Pogan, up on its side in the pit area. A serious accident in the pit area, but look at Pogan, the car cut in half, the car in half, but Kevin Pogan climbs out. This accident occurring up at the head of the pit area. The crews are there, no fire, and once again, a tribute to the safety of these cars. Kevin Pogan climbs out of his broken and split machine. A tremendous impact against the wall coming off of four. The yellow flag flies. There's debris on the main stretch. What a star-crossed man at this speedway is Kevin Hogan. We think back, of course, we look now at the end of the pit lane wall, which we believe he may have hit. That's why the car was broken in half, much as Dennis Firestone's was years before. Here he is. You can see the scrapes on the side of his helmet as the car slid sideways. Kevin Kogan being tended to by the medical experts here. There is the car, the engine disconnected as they watch and protect for fire. That's actually up in the north end of the pits. Now here is the situation. Let's just watch. Coming off of the fourth turn. Kogan taps the outside wall, the inside wall, and then the end of the pit wall. Now there is an attenuated barrier right there at the end of the pit wall. There is also an ABC Sports camera right at the end of that pit wall. The field now very, very slow behind the pace car. And here is that camera at the end of the pit wall. You see Kogan sliding. He comes down. Now watch. Kevin Kogan impacts the end of that attenuated barrier which absorbed a great deal of the injury in energy in that impact. So we are under yellow at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway with four laps complete. The leader is Emerson Fittipaldi. We'll be back with more coverage of the Indianapolis 500 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We're back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the 73rd running of the Indianapolis 500, and the pit is jammed with emergency crews right now, cleaning up the debris caused when Kevin Kogan lost control, coming off of the fourth turn, hit the outside wall, the inside wall, and then the end of the pit barrier. Now, there is the car sale. You can see that he was high coming through turn four, Paul. High, slightly out of the groove, and right there, he impacts the wall and starts toward the inside of the track. Spinning backwards, this may have saved his life, and he hit backwards when he hit really hard for the first time. Now, of course, he impacts the end of the pit wall. And now, sliding across to the inside of the pit wall, the newly resurfaced pit lane there. Coming to a rest. I said he was star crossed here as we look at another uh, angle of the same thing from our camera that was located at the end of that pit wall. I say was, but I believe it is now uh, out of commission. Kevin, of course, crashed here just after the start in 1982 when he was driving for Roger Penske. That triggered an incredible controversy, which his career never really did recover. He almost won the race in 1986, was beaten only at the restart by Bobby, uh, Bobby Rahal with just uh, two laps to go. It's funny that all of the events of fate that have affected Kevin Kogan here at the Speedway have happened right on this exact part of the track. All right, let's get an update, Brian Hammond. Hey, we're with Andy Kanapensky, the team manager for Kevin Kogan. Uh, have you been in contact with him? Is he okay? Yes, I have. I just talked to him while we were sitting on pit row here. He's fine, he's coherent, and he's talk, complaining about a uh, small uh, neck uh, pain. Uh, they've uh, put a neck brace on him, put him on the board, and taken him to the hospital just for observation. But he's alert and doesn't seem broken. Uh, Did he say what happened? Well, my observer up in uh, turn four, we have one up high by radio communications, Phil Roth, uh, told me he was coming high out of four, hit the wall and spun, and backed it into the guardrail. Uh, at the pit entrance, hit her pretty hard. The good news is Kevin Kogan seems to be okay. Paul? 
So Kevin Kogan takes a trip to the track medical center, but he appears to be all right. Six laps are now complete at the Indy 500. Emerson Fittipaldi leads, and we run under yellow. I'm going to go for Ben Back Live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're under yellow. The pits are still closed. There's the reason why. They're continuing to pick up little parts, pieces of debris as a result of Kevin Kogan's accident. Uh, his life most certainly saved by the safety designs in the car and the attenuated barrier that allows itself to collapse at the end of that pit wall. On board with Michael Andretti, who so far in this race has had a pretty good run. He started 21st. He is now up to 13th, and he did that in two green flag laps. We now have eight laps into the record book. And Emerson Fittipaldi is out in front, but of course running under yellow. Ahead, you can see the rest of the field, the line just ahead, 12 cars ahead of Michael Andretti. Of course, we have talked about high record speeds. Uh, that is uh, not possible when the field is running under the yellow. If the race becomes one filled with incident, then of course, the focus shifts to the pit crew. Pit work is always very important here. You see, uh, see Gary Bettenhausen now being pushed back into the garage. He had started from the middle of the fifth row, his best opportunity for years. That Bettenhausen obsession, that long time saga, continues, certainly without a resolution today. So is Gary Bettenhausen terribly disappointed, heads back to the pit. Once an Indy car is taken behind the pit wall, the day is complete. They can't do repairs in the garage area and bring that car back out. It's ironic, isn't it, Paul? Look at how calm everything looks. These cars virtually parading by. This in contrast to the savage severity of that accident to Kevin Colgan. I saw him there, incidentally, with his wife, Tracy, so I know she knows he's okay. Tired of tugging and lugging your hose? It's ever... We're back at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I'm Dr. Jerry Punch, and we're standing with Dr. Henry Bach outside the Hannah Emergency Medical Center. And Henry, you just checked over with Kevin Colgan. How is he? Uh, Kevin Cogan was brought in here after his track incident. He was awake and alert. He's complaining of some neck pain and some right arm pain. Uh, we're going to send him down to the Methodist Trauma Center for further evaluation and treatment. Henry, you were able to see the accident on those monitors in there. You, probably like many of us, couldn't believe that uh, he would be able to walk in as well as he did. I guess we've seen it before, Jerry, and it continues to amaze us, but we're very pleased that it comes out this way. Another tribute to the safety equipment on these cars. Let's go up pit road to Jackaroo. Jack? Jerry, it's a very quiet gasoline alley for Gary Bettenhausen. Gary, this is supposed to be your year, and you're out. What happened? Uh, we don't know. Something, I think the cam broke or something. It was just the first gear warming up, and uh, all of a sudden the engine went pop bang and quit running. And... Your feelings, though, you know, you, you really had pointed towards this one and felt that this was the best shot you've had since probably mid-1970. How do you feel now? Truthfully, I can't say it on air. Disappointed, you know. I, I really felt I had a chance to run right up in the front today and uh, with a little luck maybe even win the race because it's a 220-mile-an-hour race car. You said it before when we did the, the story on the Bettenhausens. You don't know how many more years this family can give to this place. Any thoughts now about that? I have to start counting days again. <laughs> Have you picked up any favorite drivers over the years? 
we go back over the years of Parnelli, Jones, of course Mario Andretti and AJ Foyt have been here for a long time. You now got the Penske cars. They dominate the front row. You watch those cars, but uh, it could be a very interesting race as it usually is. Who's your choice here today? I don't have a favorite choice. It will take somebody very special, very uh, skillful to beat that front row. Mr. Vice President, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the race. Thank you very much. Paul, let's go back to you. All right, Dan Quayle. He's got a little better seats this year, though, Sam, than he would in the past. But you know, he said it would take a lot to beat that front row. How about superstition? Do you realize that number four, which is Rick Mears' number, has never won a race in a year, ending except one ending in zero? And do you realize that no one has won from the middle of the front row since Mario did it in 69? That might put Al out. And how about Emerson? His problem is he's got too many letters in his name, believe it or not. Donald Davidson, the great historian out here, pointed out that in the last 20 years, so you have to have a short name like Mears or Voight or Unser to win this thing. Well, the field works its way down the home stretch again, completing lap number 14. All but 12 of those laps have been run under caution, 12 under caution, and two under green. Now on the 15th lap as the leader comes across the line. Then Apaldi is still the leader of the race. He has led in three different 500-mile races, and they are now reporting that Kevin Kogan will, in fact, be taken to Indianapolis Methodist Hospital, where he will be examined to make sure that uh, everything is okay. The medical center here, while it's very, very good for immediate trauma, is uh, better used uh, only for the immediate situation. Let's take a look at this accident again, because it puts me in mind of 1964, when Dave McDonald, in a very similar spin, crashed against the inside wall, burst into flame, but didn't have the advantage of being caught by the outside wall and went into the path of Eddie Sachs. It took both of their lives. Look how much better the season is today. Now, the field begins to accelerate as they come toward the fourth turn. The pace car, high on the track, dives into the pit area, and Emerson Fittipaldi leads them back to the green flag. They fly down the main stretch. There comes Mario, trying to the